Hi, my name is Charlie Wolf Sandal. This class is MS 587, and in this uh, tutorial, I'm going to be working on the introduction to Cloud Bigtable, which is one of the Google tutorials that show you how to use Bigtable. And uh, in the first step, we're going to set up our instance, table, and family. So if I'm on the Google Cloud platform, the first thing I did is set up a project that allows me to work on that. That's right here. Secondly, we're going to open up the Cloud Shell. We're going to wait for that to connect. Okay, we're connected to the Cloud Shell. And now we're going to make sure that our uh, we've got our project connected. And I'm just using my project name from up above. However, the difference is we don't use spaces and we use dashes and all lowercase. Okay, so we're now set. The next thing we're going to do is set some environmental variables in order to be able to paste things. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is make sure that the Bigtable API is running. We're going to do that by using this command. Okay, finish successfully. And then we're going to create an instance. And once again, we used all of our instance information and cluster information from up here. By setting those, by doing this command, it's called all of those up. Next thing we're doing is uh, we're populating the CVT configuration file and we're creating a table and column family by running the following. So there's the first. And then we're going to now create our tables. And once again, we've already set these table ID up above to be base data. Okay, so that's the end of this section. Next, we're going to import our data. We're going to enable our Cloud Dataflow API by using the following command. We're enabling that service. Okay, now that we've uh, allowed the Dataflow API to run, we're going to import 
to the table. Okay, so we've finished the import. We're now getting the code for the intro Java. And we're changing to Java 11. In our next section, we're going to go ahead and perform a lookup. We're going to do that by creating a file um, that's going to be called busqueries.java, and you can do that either through um, one of the terminal editors or you can open the editor here. Uh, you can see what we've got. We're looking up the, the different lat long and the column, and um, here's how the string row key is being looked up. And then finally, the uh, result will give us the most recent location of the bus. But since we want to see all of the values within that um, within that hour, we're going to go ahead and set this set max versions to integer max value. And now we're going to go back to the terminal, and um, the next step is going to be actually running that uh, Java in order to see our results. And you can see right here, we've got uh, the latitude and longitude of that vehicle on the route for that particular day, for that particular hour. Our next step is gonna be copy our latitude and longitudes that the JavaScript puts out to us. We take that back over to a program called Mac, uh, MapMaker. And we're going to go ahead and import our data. Copy paste. We're going to name the layer. And we paste our lat longs that we got from our program. And you can see it is now placed all of those and it's giving us all of our particular locations. The next thing we can do is view all of the data for the bus line for that hour. So instead of just one particular bus, and uh, the change we're gonna make is to our Java code. And essentially what it's gonna look like is we're going to set up a new scan. And essentially what that scanner does is we give it a uh, starting position to scan, which is this. And then where it's going to, uh, where's it going, where's it going to end? And basically the timestamp is the 14, 96, 27, 52. Okay, now that we've got that code saved, the next thing we're going to do is go back into our terminal and run the next command, which in this in this time we're going to scan, use the scan function instead of the get function. And in this case, you can now see these are all the buses at this particular time. And if we copy this again, we go back to our Mac Maker demo, import, 
a new one and we'll call this all buses. And you can see now we've got um, both sets of data. If we turn this one off, we've got the that one particular bus. And then the, these are all buses for that hour. If we'd like to make them a little more visible so we can see each of them, we can change the icon type and maybe the size as well so that they overlap. Same with this one. Okay, now you can see both sets of data overlapping as well. The other thing we can do to get an interesting result is uh, see what all of the buses did for the month. And the way we could do that is by removing our timestamp on each of these. Now that we're back into the terminal, what we're going to do is execute the command and scanning the entire bus line for the month. And we'll let that run because it's going to take a little while. Okay, what you can do is copy all of this. Now, one thing that I did was I piped the output into a file. so that I could copy it because I had some issues with copying it off of the uh, terminal. Okay, now we are back over to MapMaker with our points. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to import the data. Call it bus month data. We'll paste our values. And we will import. Okay, we see the points starting to show up. And it's very helpful because we just have a lot of points here. So there's a couple different things we can do to make it more useful, one of which is changing this from the markers and we're going to form a heat map with it instead and now what you can see is we have dark red where the buses stop a lot. The yellow are actually bus stops. And the darker the color, the more stops that occur. And the more green, the less stops that occur. So I hope this has been a good example of how you can use uh, Google 
cloud as well as big table to present and visually show.